Hi, don't touch that dial. This is Dave Flix, all Dave, all the time. And now the next episode of the FinTech Writers Workshop. Hope you enjoy it. I was asked to give a short keynote to the Merchant Payment Ecosystem Summer Week conference, um, which actually had been put back to September. And I was interested to do this because this was a conference that was created to be virtual from the ground up and contained a number of kind of interesting aspects, spreading it out over a few days, running workshops and so on. And it's always one of my favourite events anyway. So I needed to give a keynote which would, um, you know, set the tone for, for the conference. And I decided to go straight to the pandemic because I mean that's the elephant in the room isn't it so everyone will be talking about that so I decided to go with uh, payments after the pandemic and the way I chose to do it was to use the four plus four uh, breakdown a few weeks ago I'd been out actually not a few weeks ago a few months ago early in the pandemic I'd been asked to give a, a talk at a bank with with my colleague Tim Richards and we kicked around a few ideas looked at a, a list of things that we thought the bank should be should be looking at and we gradually worked that down into a sort of short list which ended up with kind of eight things in it four of them were specifically payment related and four of them were sort of adjacencies and that turned out to be a really good breakdown so I thought if I use that um, for the keynote it would help to set the agenda for the event and it would give people some scaffolding for some of their discussions in the breakouts and workshops so uh, obviously the, the 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 keynote itself draws on a lot of different um, studies and research from a lot of different areas um, to synthesize into these four adjacencies around safety identity liquidity and open banking and the four payments areas um, and I decided to do the payment areas first of course because that's the most important thing for the conference so I talked about how the virus has impacted the payment space I tried to make the point that it isn't about although contactless was you know the first push it isn't about going contact less it's about going contact free I talked about cashlessness and the need to develop strategies towards cashlessness rather than just let cash happen. But, you know, if you just let it happen, that means some people get marginalised and excluded. Talked a bit about omnichannel and the convergence and the fact that contact free and cashlessness see us converging towards the phone. And I talked about a couple of recent examples of, you know, just like the garden centre around the corner going and having lunch where you now sit at a table and scan a QR code and people bring your lunch to you. And it all works great. And you can't help but sort of wonder what, you know, why would it go back to the old way of doing it? This is a good way of doing things. And, you know, most people in the garden centre seem to be able to use phones. So it was OK. Um, and I spent a bit of time talking about, I think, one of the bits which is quite overlooked from time to time, which is, you know, the potential for government stimulus in future pandemics um, you know, to be made more efficient if we do something about the infrastructure, which you know is a bit lacking here and there. Then I talked about the adjacencies, focusing on the identity-related stuff. That that picture is actually a, taken from an Apple patent claim around identity. I just wanted to make the point that it's um, going up there. I talked about the fact that lots of new people are coming online that weren't online before. This makes them very vulnerable to fraud. I'm sure the fraud figures at the end of the year are going to be absolutely huge. So I talked about the need to, you know, really deploy some of the kind of AI, machine learning, network based um, fraud technologies to, to deliver a kind of more proactive, not just detecting fraudulent transactions, but, you know, trying to help people to not do fraudulent things in the first place. Um, I talked about digital identity for people, spent a bit of time on the FATF guidelines and the implications about moving to digital onboarding and the fact that the FATF guidelines say that digital onboarding is in some cases better than physical onboarding so that was good talked a bit about identity for companies this sometimes gets overlooked in the identity discussion but obviously it's huge at the moment because 
you know, look at the problems. I think I, I just heard on the radio today that the government reckoned that 10%, which is almost certainly a massive underestimate, of the stimulus packages for businesses have gone to the wrong people or been fraudulent. And I, I wouldn't be at all surprised. Trying to establish, you know, who owns a business and all this sort of stuff is um, difficult in the absence of an infrastructure. Talked about data driven liquidity and the fact that you, you actually need relatively little transaction data. This, is, this has been the low hanging fruit in the SME space to improve people's um, use of um, the financial system. Small businesses in particular are very bad users. Of finance, you know, they use overdrafts and credit cards and so on when they could get much cheaper financing if they planned ahead a little. And obviously helping people through the COVID crisis as well. But it turns out if you get access to the bank data, you don't need that much of it to, to be helpful here. And then, you know, my main point really was to reinforce this kind of thing about going from financial services to financial health. Payments are, are the dominant touch point with financial services. It's 85, 90 percent of the interactions for the average person. So taking that transactional data um, and using it to to you know deliver overall financial health to the consumers rather than individual financial services. I thought that's like an interesting positive narrative to finish on and would give people something you know something to think about when they're looking at the new ideas they'll be presented through the through the event. So payments as a gateway to to data driven liquidity which is just step on the way to financial health. So anyway that's just a, a quick overview uh, and um, you know, I think it, it went pretty well. And I could tell from the questions being asked in the first panel session that the goal of, you know, setting the agenda for some of the discussions had, had been achieved. So, so there you go. Well, that was the FinTech Writers Workshop. Um, I hope it was helpful to you in some way. Please keep the feedback coming, good and bad. I, I'm quite serious about thinking of ways to improve it. And uh, if you have any kind of specific areas you want me to cover in the future, just drop me a note. See you soon.